in case you are thinking of installing docker desktop in your azure virtual machine or you are planning to create one virtual machine in azure and install docker desktop there you have come to the right place there are couple of key important aspects you need to consider when you want to install docker desktop in your azure virtual machine specifically the windows virtual machine in azure first thing you need to be aware whether the virtual machine that you have already created or you are going to create that supports nested virtualization or not if it does not support nested virtualization you won't be able to install docker desktop that is the very first important point i have a documentation right now opened in my browser if i scroll down if you see this particular line this three dots hyper threaded and capable of running nested virtualization here we have the sq family the different categories of azure virtual machine the ones which has three dots against their names they only support nested virtualization and those vms only would allow you to install docker desktop i'll share this link with you in the description so this is the first thing we have to check before we create any virtual machine on azure clicking on resource group i want to create a new resource group and want to create the vm over there in case i don't need the vm i'll delete the entire resource group later on click on create named it docker demo rg rg for resource group review plus create click on create it is created going to the resource group now i want to create the windows virtual machine click on create in this text box search the marketplace i am going to type virtual machine i see this word is already available there let me select this scrolling down a bit click on virtual machine click create providing a vm name docker demo scroll down this is the second important thing the security type you have to change to standard by default it is trusted launch virtual machines if this is selected again docker desktop installation would not work be very sure to change it to standard so this is the second important point under the image i am going to select windows if i scroll down i have this windows or you can type on here I'm going to select this Windows 10 Professional version 22H2 x64 Gen 2. Now I want to show you one important point from Docker website. Let me go to Google, search for install Docker desktop on Windows. Click on this particular link, docs.docker.com desktop windows install. And scrolling down, here we have few options. The Docker desktop installation could be WSL2 base, Windows subsystem for Linux, or Hyper-V backend. We are going to use this WSL2, that is the recommended way. You can see over here, the Windows versions are mentioned. If it is Windows 11 64-bit, Home or Pro version 21 H2 or higher. And for Windows 10 64-bit, the recommended version is Home or Pro 22 H2. The reason I came here, if I now go back to my Azure portal, if you see, this is 22H2. That is the whole reason I came here. So whenever you are installing Docker Desktop, you need to be sure of this different versions. Going back to this Azure portal, let me continue. Now here, this size or family, this is the most important part. By default, it is showing me D2S V3. The reason being, I have selected this kind of VMs earlier. You can click over here, see all sizes. Now here, you need to check with that old list with three stars or three asterisks, right? V3, DSV3, D4, DSV4, etc. Whichever has three stars. Now, there is no direct stars mentioned in the portal. You have to check the name and accordingly select your VM size. Now, I'm closing this. I'm continuing with this DSV3. It is D2SV3. If I click on this drop down, there are similar other options also. Providing username, password. Scrolling down, check this licensing, next disks, keeping these things default. One additional point, although it is not directly related to Docker installation, if you see this estimated cost, based on requirement, you select the VM and always check the cost, right? That is a standard practice. Otherwise, you can spend unnecessary amount of money. One small thing here, I see this disk is premium SSD and this is 1639. I don't need premium, so I'm just reducing it to standard SSD or standard HDD. If I change this, you can see it has changed from 1600 to 798 something. Delete with VM is also checked. Next, networking. 
scrolling down i want to delete the public ip and nic when vm is deleted again this is not related to docker desktop but these are standard practice that i generally follow click on management scrolling down this also i generally follow to stop additional cost i always put a shutdown time daily so that even if i forget to stop the vm it does not run continuously and i keep on spending the money it's always better to have a safety valve i can customize it to my timing next nothing specific click on review plus create clicking on create now it is initializing deployment and submitting that it will take some time for the vm to be created once the vm is created i'll resume the recording now the deployment is succeeded i can go to the resource clicking on go to resource the vm would be on started state so i need to connect this is the public ip address of the vm i can copy this and using this ip address i can rdp to the remote vm typing rdp over here remote desktop connection pasted my ip over here my username i am pasting click on connect providing the password over here remember me okay don't ask me again for the connections to this computer click on yes click on accept as a first step open powershell run as administrator we can run this following command to install WSL2 and the default distribution of Linux along with it. Generally, it is Ubuntu WSL double hyphen install. This process is going to take a while. When it's done, I'll resume the recording. We can see the message at the bottom. Ubuntu has been installed. The requested operation is successful. Changes will not be effective until the system is rebooted. Hence, we are going to reboot the system. Once it is up and running, I'll resume the recording. In case of Azure VM, if you need to restart it or stop it, always do it from the Azure portal. Clicking on restart, click yes. The virtual machine is restarted. I'm going to connect using RDP. Now, once the system boots up, we can see different command prompts were there and in this command prompt it is telling ubuntu is already installed it is launching ubuntu and this will take few minutes as this would take some time i'm pausing the recording once it is done i'll resume it in the meantime i can go to task manager click on more details performance under cpu i can see virtualization is enabled unless virtualization is enabled we cannot succeed in docker installation let me close this. We need to create a default Unix user account. I'm entering a Unix username. It does not need to be same with the Windows username, but I'm keeping it same just to remember this. Press enter. Entering the password now. Press enter. Retyping the password. Pressing enter. Installation successful. Now we are set for actual Docker installation. Let me open the browser. Searching for Docker installation on Windows. Clicking on this link, docs.docker.com desktop install windows install, the first link that generally appears. Clicking on this link, docker desktop for windows x86-64. The download has started, download completed, going to the folder, right click, run as administrator. It's initializing. In configuration, it is showing use WSL2 instead of Hyper-V. That's what we are going to do and add shortcut to desktop. Keeping both the options as is, click on OK. It's unpacking the files. Once this is complete, I'll resume the recording. Docker is asking to log out of Windows to complete the installation. Instead, what I'll do, I'll close this and restart the system. Once our Windows system is up, we'll proceed further. Restarting it again. Connecting to the VM. Now we can see the Docker desktop icon. And after installation, this Docker subscription service agreement would appear. Click on accept. You can provide this information for the time being. I'm skipping all of them. It's starting the Docker engine. Now Docker is up and running. These are the different tabs we have images, volumes. All of them would be empty as we have not done anything. I'm going to open PowerShell once again, run as administrator. Just checking whether the Docker command is running. It's showing me the Docker version. I'm just going to run a test container to check the Docker functionality. So this is the command, Docker run hello world. 
Now we can see it is pulling the image and the download is complete. If I go back to Docker under images, I can see this particular image. If we go to container, we should be seeing a particular container object over here. So to summarize, we have installed the Docker desktop on the Windows system and we just downloaded one sample image just to see whether the basic functionality is working or not.